Uh, next topic is uh, future stroke thermolaptomy device. Uh, welcome, Dr. Dilip. Yeah. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Zifeng. Uh, thanks to the uh, meeting committee for inviting me. I'm going to uh, address a uh, technology that's really <coughs> uh, come up on the horizon recently uh, of cyclical aspiration. But to just, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, my conflicts of interest slide is missing. Uh, I, I consult for Medtronic, uh, for Serenovus, and uh, Rapid Medical, but I ha have no conflicts of interest with uh, the, the topic of this uh, presentation. So we started with first generation stent retrievers. Uh, many of you <coughs> are very familiar, but for the trainees, we actually tried anything and everything, and this was a small uh, uh, device, uh, which is a snare that we tried to use, and, and uh, Mercy certainly got us going, and then we had the uh, big jump forward with second, second generation devices, and uh, uh, although we are used to in the US with Medtronic and and uh, uh, I mean, uh, Solitaire and Trivo, there, there's other European devices that really uh, added to this revolution, uh, preset, catch, and aperio. Uh, and we are in the third generation, uh, really a great progress. We have segmented retrievers, Embotrap is now approved, um, and, and uh, 3D is approved. And 3D is uh, considered more of a assist strength retriever, but it's very much there. Uh, it's always uh, it's proved to be used with the uh, uh, with the ACE catheters, and then Microvention has uh, the Eric device that's again segmented, and we are up to the fourth generation. Um, we should we should really be pretty excited about this. Uh, we have the uh, 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 retrievers that have uh, like uh, the the Versailles has uh, this very cool design of um, uh, segments that that are that are uh, that confirm better to the vessel, um, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, and then uh, Neva is another device, and then Rapid Medical has the scent retriever that can uh, be uh, inflated and deflated in the vessel uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, interactive design. So the uh, uh, US has these four uh, approved retrievers, and, and uh, Phenox may be coming soon, uh, but what we really are seeing in our practices and in the literature is that aspiration has really come to the fore, uh, either as first line or in combination with strength retrievers. And uh, the, the survey published in uh, SNIS, um, by JNIS I mean, showed that 40% uh, of neuro IRs, 40% um, of uh, neuro interventionists are using aspiration and at least one third in combination with uh, Scent retrievers. Um, in my own practice, I, I have a first line scent retriever uh, policy, but I'm combining aspiration a fair bit. The ease of use clearly has led to this being adopted globally, uh, but also the data from the Compass trial uh, suggesting that uh, there is 50% less um, cost is, is, is driving uh, this uh, adoption. And certainly the uh, equivalence of this uh, technology with scent retrievers from Astra and Compass uh, gives a lot of confidence. And what Aspiration does is, is uh, intuitively straightforward, but if you break it down mathematically, uh, it, it's not that complicated. You have a suction force, the green arrow that, that's, that's uh, pulling this clot down, and then friction that is maintaining the clot in, in the um, vessel uh, and, and, and uh, sticking it to the vessel wall, there is some um, collateral pressures that are actually helping the suction. And what we have had is constant suction as, as our um, uh, technique. And we certainly understand that the force is equal to pressure uh, into area. So if we use the same force of suction and the maximum one can go is 20, minus 29 millimeters. Um, if we want to increase our ability to suck this clot out, you need to increase area. So that's what's happened. We have had the uh, luminal diameters that have increased um, of the catheters and we've had more and more success with it. They've become more navigable. But what we 
have an unmet need is wearing, is, is anything uh, that we can modify with this pressure. We are stuck with minus 29 as the maximum uh, pressure that one can physically grow on Earth, and that uh, can um, uh, be possibly changed by changing the uh, way this pressure is applied, and cyclical pressure or cyclical suction to, to remove the clot is something that's quite interesting. But I'll come to that in a second. Uh, th these were the initial diameters, and it's just astounding to me that we, have, we are almost up to 0.72, which is uh, inches, which is the uh, limit, I think. But you never know. Our, our, our med device companies and startups are, are amazing, and I feel like one day we, we, we'll just um, uh, have catheters that are possibly even, even bigger. Uh, but the uh, uh, idea of, of uh, uh, the, the suction pumps has also evolved. We are, we are uh, going to higher pressures, and then we are also able to collect clots uh, with the newer generation pumps and, and have higher va vacuums. Uh, and, and cyclical suction is uh, being developed as a new um, technology that's unmet. This group from, um, from Virginia, uh, Commonwealth University, Scott Simon and such uh, published a very interesting paper that showed, uh, and I <coughs> um, have the reference here, but they showed that cyclical aspiration and when compared to just a uniform suction led to a much uh, a higher speed of aspirating synthetic clots in, in a, in, a uh, in vitro model. And that uh, is, is certainly something that's uh, fairly new and their idea was uh, this is um, not, not from their paper, this is from an abstract that's being presented tomorrow um, at, at SVIN, but their idea is that with uniform suction, the pressure that's applied to the face of the clot is, is constant and the friction is maintaining it here, whereas the cyclical uh, aspiration could actually uh, tug it uh, out of the vessel wall uh, better, and that's what they found in their in vitro model. And that's what uh, other groups are also finding. And here is a video of a cyclical aspiration of a slow clot. And what you can see is that the, um, the, the, the clot is pretty rapidly ingested uh, as, the, as the pressure is varied uh, at, at the face of this clot. And you can see that the, the, um, there is a, a moment of uh, uh, aspiration where, where the pressure is low and, and then you suddenly tug the uh, clot back as the pressure increases. And so the uh, idea of cyclical aspiration is to uh, basically uh, create a uh, negative force and then, um, and then um, relax it for, for a brief second and then again, um, again uh, uh, re-apply re, uh, a high pressure. What you see with the regular aspiration is that you, you have the uh, uniform aspiration is you have a collar and the clot is stuck and a lot of clot is hanging out. So here is um, a uniform suction video on, in vitro and you can see that uh, beyond a certain point uh, with a bigger clot, you, you, you have to pull a large amount of clot uh, that, that may be outside. If you go to uh, a, a cyclical aspiration, the idea is that, and, and Matt Gunas has worked on this a fair bit, and in personal communications and other uh, conferences that he's presented this at, the thought is that when you relax that brief second of pressure, you accordion the vessel and, and possibly separate the clot out a little better from the vessel wall, and you have a higher uh, amount of clot. So here is a video uh, of cyclical aspiration, and you can see that that the clot sort of t tugged free a little easier, the same clot that was um, in similar in size to the previous video. So the uh, the uh, data on this is is uh, coming out uh, in in a, a furious way, and and we'll see more of this. But the uh, the intuitive mechanism of why this may work better is again that you you have these clots that are pretty stuck and cyclical aspiration may get them unstuck better. So fairly uh, uh, intuitive mechanism. And also the safety of this technique may be higher. Here is a, uh, a, 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 a large animal, a peripheral a, a, a 
a model where this clot was um, aspirated from a M2 or a, a size vessel and you have spasm from uniform uh, aspiration, but with cyclical aspiration, the spasm is less. So there may be uh, safety aspects that may be better, including uh, the fact that if you ingest the clot fully, you may have less uh, uh, ENT, less less uh, breakage of the clot and le less uh, embolization to, to non-territorial vessels. So I think we are in a um, exciting era of uh, uh, growth in aspiration uh, technologies uh, for thrombectomy. Uh, aspiration it has been widely adopted with or without uh, stent retrievers, and the um, reasons are, are um, out there. There is ease of use, there is lower cost, and, and uh, scientific evidence that it's as good as uh, stent retrievers is there. There is certainly an amazing evolution in the navigability of larger uh, catheters, but cyclic aspiration has a tremendous promise. Uh, we have something going beyond all the pumps that we have right now where we could uh, really uh, change the, um, our ability to aspirate large clots uh, and, and do them better and with a better first pass rate. So uh, I'd like to uh, uh, close with saying that this is a, uh, so something that uh, we, we should watch and possibly could um, uh, be the future of aspiration. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your attention.